this is Penina Taylor and I'm coming to you from Israel and I just wanted to talk to you for a minute about a topic that has become very popular recently and uh, one that I think that we need to address. There has been a recent upswing in missionary activity here in Israel, both in the English language and in the Hebrew language. And there's been a lot of talk about all of the interfaith discussion that's going on and the fact that there are a lot of Jews in Israel who are now being subjected to missionary activity. Really, at the crux of the issue, pardon the pun, at the crux of the issue is the fact that we need education. Now, I wrote a book recently called Scripture Twisting. It's um, here, I'll show you the book Scripture Twisting. And I call it Scripture Twisting because of the fact that um, what I have found is, is that a lot of times one of the things that missionaries will do is they will take our verses from the Tanakh and they will twist them around and they'll get into a discussion with a Jewish person who really doesn't know how to deal with the verses that they're plucking out. Even if somebody is very well read in the Tanakh, who has studied Gemara and who has studied Chomesh and who has studied the Tanakh uh, in depth, still may not be prepared to deal with the arguments that a missionary might give. And so I created a course, and this book is part of the course, in order to answer the most common uh, claims that Christians make for Christianity and for their Messiah. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be offering this as a webinar online. I've given my course here in Israel at a seminary and at a yeshiva. And uh, I've also given it to uh, adults in Jerusalem several times over the last eight years. I've given it probably a good 15 times. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer this course to you online in the form of a webinar. Uh, and the purpose of the course is to help you understand the Christian mindset, the messianic mindset, where people are coming from, what arguments they're using, what their beliefs are, and how to combat them. Now you may say, well, I'm a from Jew. I'm an observant Jew. I live in a very small community. Why would I need this information? Why do I need to fill my head with information about another religion. There's certainly so much to be done just in studying Judaism. And my question to you would be, okay, maybe you don't need it. Maybe your faith is secure, or maybe you're never in a situation where you might need to deal with it. But what about your children who might be going off to college, and some of them might be going off to um, a secular college, or even if they're going off to some place like Stern or Yeshiva University, that does not guarantee that they're not going to come in contact with missionaries, especially missionaries who are Jewish. In addition, if you live anywhere in the United States or actually anywhere in the world, there's always the chance that you or your children will come in contact with a missionary on the street, in the marketplace, or something like that. But I am especially concerned about those who are my colleagues, who are cure of workers, who are regularly dealing with college students and even older people who have, who may be exploring Judaism. You know, you invite this really nice kind of uneducated Jewish couple into your home for a Shabbat meal, and while they're sitting at the table, all of a sudden you discover, wait a minute, these people are messianic, or these people are actually Christians. What am I going to do now? And uh, I remember a few years ago, I, when I was living in Baltimore, I got a knock on my door Friday night from the rabbi next door. Panina, I thought I was inviting this family that didn't know anything about Judaism, and I invited them to come for Shabbat dinner, and now I realize that I have a whole family of missionaries sitting at my table with my children and me. What do I do? So the question is, what do you do? What would you do if someone came up to you and said, did you know that the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, foretells that the Messiah is supposed to come before the destruction of the second temple? Destruction of the second temple was 2,000 years ago. Who do you think the Messiah is? Or what do you do if somebody asks you, you know, how can you get have forgiveness for your sins? What if you were to die tonight? How do you know that you'll go to heaven when 
Leviticus chapter 17 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. We don't have a, a temple, so we don't have any shedding of blood, any sacrifices. So how do we get forgiveness for our sins? These questions and many more are answered in my course called Scripture Twisting, which I'm going to be offering in the next few weeks to you as a webinar. So please stay tuned for details. I look forward to seeing you there.